<laughs> we got them, baby. After all that craziness, after all that stress, and after all that drama, after all that impatience, the Baltimore Ravens have signed officially. Well, it'll be official in a couple of days, but they are signing Derrick Henry. They signing him to a two year deal, two year, sixteen million dollar deal worth up to. 20 million dollars and he gets nine million dollars guaranteed team keep it clean man look real i'll I be telling y'all this but this video is a special occasion we are sitting right now we're sitting at 73,918 subscribers we better get over 74,000 subscribers with this video alone i ain't playing with y'all let's get it man but anyway leave a like on the video too but derrick henry is now in the backfield with Lamar Jackson. Adam Schefter, he put out a very interesting stat when it came to Derrick Henry. He said this, most rushing yards since 2018, Derrick Henry. Uh, most rushing yards by a quarterback since 2018, Lamar Jackson. And now they're on the same team. I love it. I love it. I, I, I love this move for a lot of different reasons, and we're getting ready to go over all of those reasons. Number one, the biggest reason why I love this move is for playoffs. It's for playoffs. So many times we've seen these Baltimore Ravens in the playoffs. We've seen to where through the regular season, we ain't worried about that. We ain't got no concerns with regular seasons. That's not what's troubling our minds. Re regular season, no. It's playoff time. The Baltimore Ravens love, they love, 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 love getting away from who they are come playoff time. They love switching things up completely come playoff time. They love doing the opposite of their identity come playoff time. And that's such a big issue. That's a huge issue. And it's been something that's been so detrimental to them especially in their most biggest playoff losses over the past, what, five, six years, obviously this year and then in 2019, the 2019 season. But now, now this move, this move does not guarantee that they'll change or stick to their identity in the playoffs. But in my opinion, this move does help them. It puts more pressure on them to stick to who they are. Reason being because now, Oh, you paying some real money to a running back. You paying, it looks like it's about eight mil per year. Cause again, they said the base of the deal is a uh it's a two year, sixteen million dollar deal. So the base is it sounds like eight mil per, but it said it can go up to twenty million dollars. So um, if it does, I'm sure there's going to be some crazy incentives in there. Maybe some not likely to be earned incentives. Maybe some likely to be earned incentives. Hey, we'll see. But this helps the Baltimore Ravens. This can help push them in the playoffs to be like, hey, no, 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 no. We got Derrick Henry and we paying Derrick Henry a significant amount of money at the running back position. We need to use him. And another thing, too, Derrick Henry, he's a very, excuse me, he's an extremely respected running back in this league. Extremely respected. So I don't think Derrick Henry, again, I don't know how his personality is. We're going to get to know that over the coming weeks and months and, and years. But if you got a Derrick Henry just sit, you you can't overlook a Derrick Henry sitting on a sideline. So if it's playoff time and Ravens not running the ball, there's no way you can be like, hey, where did Derrick Henry go? I, I don't see. No, 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 no. There's no way that you're going to miss a Derrick Henry just standing there because that's a giant. He, he is literally a giant. So that's a beautiful thing. Another thing with this move, why this move should be very, very exciting for Ravens fans is because Derrick Henry is a producer. Derrick Henry is a producer. For the longest, what, the last eight years, he has been a Tennessee Titan. And he's been putting up numbers. And a lot of times, the thing, the thing that's crazy, it was always so crazy to me with Derrick Henry. He puts up crazy numbers. And when you think about the Tennessee Titans, first person you think of, or a lot of us, the first person I think of, boom, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry. So, you know, if that's the first person I think of, you know that's the first person a lot of defenses think of because that's, hey, how do we stop the Titans? Oh, take Derrick Henry out the game. Eliminate Derrick Henry from their game plan. But Derrick Henry, despite being the Titans' main focal point, despite being their best player, he would still, despite behind a bad offensive line, he would still produce and put up numbers. How do you do that? How, when you're the main player, you're the focal point of an offense, you're the focal point of a team, 
but he still continued to produce. Let's look at Derrick Henry's numbers over the years. We're going to go way back. We'll go back to 2016, his rookie year. So he put up 490 yards. Okay, cool. Then he got a little more playing time. 2017, he put up 744 yards. But 2018, that's when he, he, just, he never looked back ever since. Never looked back. 2018, he put up 1,059 yards, 12 touchdowns. 2019, he put up 1,500 yards, 16 touchdowns. 2020, that was his 2,000-yard season. He put up 2,027 yards, 17 touchdowns. 2021, he put up 937 yards, 10 touchdowns. 2022, 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns. Last year, 1,100 yards, 12 touchdowns. And we know last year that, that Titans team was bad, but he still produced. We know there's been years here in and out where the Titan teams have been bad. There's been years here in and out where the Titan teams have been good. But Derrick Henry, again, he produces regardless. But now if you envision Derrick Henry behind that Titans offensive line on that Titans team with those Titans weapons, but now you envision him with the Baltimore Ravens. Envision him with the Baltimore Ravens on a team with, that usually has a good run-blocking offensive line. And they still got some stuff to work out this offseason, but I'm sure they'll get it done. But imagine Derrick Henry on these Baltimore Ravens with Lamar Jackson in the backfield with a, a Pat Ricard blocking for him. <laughs> think, of, think about Derrick Henry is already a problem enough, but now you get a Pat Ricard blocking for a Derrick Henry. It ain't no game, man. It ain't no game. And then something to think about. And this is not an over-exaggeration. I'm not just saying this because I'm excited about this signing. But think about last year. Gus Edwards. What Gus Edwards? I think he had like 13 touchdowns last year. I would not be surprised if Derrick Henry, if he ended up getting like 17, 18 touchdowns. Reason being, because he'll have a couple where he'll break off some nice long runs and whatnot. But Ravens move that ball down the field. They get into that red zone, especially they get to the goal line. <laughs> Why not? Why not? The, oh, I feel Derrick Henry. Boom. There you go. Oh, Derrick Henry. Oh, take it. You, you got it. So with Derrick Henry, like, who, who's going to stop him on the goal line? Who? Well, I mean, I know there's some pretty good NFL defenders out there. And some people are going to get their licks on them like they have in the past. But Derrick Henry, nine times out of ten on the goal line, he's winning that. So that just makes him that much more valuable to the Baltimore Ravens. And again, you, I love how last year, last year the Baltimore Ravens made a big jump with this. When it came to when they got to the goal line, when it came to when they were five yards out, ten yards out, or when they were close, they didn't play the games. They didn't, they didn't get all cute. They didn't get all pretty. Oh, we got a fancy. No, they got rid of a lot of that because in years before, they used to get all, when they got to the goal line, they would get cute. And it's like, no, 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 just be straight up. Be straightforward. Don't beat around the bush. Just get there. Last year, they did that a lot, a whole lot. And it made such a big difference. Now you got Derrick Henry back there. And shout out to Gus Edwards real quick. We appreciated and loved Gus Edwards. Shout out to him because he did a phenomenal job for the opportunities that he was given with the Baltimore Ravens. But now the Baltimore Ravens got Derrick Henry. Oh, you, oh, yeah. Straight up, man. Straight up. So this can be a beautiful thing. Now, we talked about a lot of the good. With Derrick Henry, we still got more to talk about. Oh, yeah, Derrick Henry, he's also a quarterback, too. Derrick Henry could throw that ball. So, you know, them, them plays that the Titans would run where they would pitch it to Derrick Henry, toss it to Derrick Henry, and Derrick Henry be in the backfield, look like he's going to run, and he stop. What is it, the, the Statue of Liberty play, I think? That's what it's called. He stopped, and then he throw it. I mean, he, he ran it on the, on the Ravens before, but Derrick Henry, he's capable of that. He can do it. So, that adds another little wrinkle into the Baltimore Ravens offense, and you know they like throwing in them wrinkles here and there now. But Derrick Henry, we talked about a lot of the good, and we've still got more good to talk about. But concern that I have with Derrick Henry becoming a member of the Baltimore Ravens, um, and this is the, up to the Ravens to fix this or to make sure that it's not an issue. I can't say to fix it because it's not an issue yet, but it was for the Tennessee Titans. Derrick Henry, first down back. Derrick Henry, second down back. Derrick Henry, passing downs. Titans would take him off the field. Titans would remove Derrick Henry from the equation on passing downs. Now, reason I think that that could be a potential issue, it's not an issue yet because we still got to get to the season, but reason why I think that could be a potential issue because it could be like, oh, oh, Derrick Henry's coming off the field. Oh, they're passing. 
that could be a tale for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, there is that saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Could the Baltimore Ravens transform Derrick Henry into this pass catching back? Could they transfer him into this pass protection back? Hey, you never know. You never know. But that is just one thing that I would be a bit concerned about. Now, what they could do, and it wouldn't necessarily be such a tell if they, uh, whether they left him on the field on third downs, and they, again, they figured it out, or if they removed him and one of their other backs was there and their other backs just run the ball too. Because again, we know what the Baltimore Ravens now, Derrick Henry is expected, or he, no expectation, he will be their feature back. He will be their guy. But the Baltimore Ravens, right now, they still got Justice Hill on the squad. They still got Keith Mitchell on the squad. Oh, man, I, please be healthy for the beginning of this season. Don't rush it now. Don't rush it. But we really hope that Keith Mitchell is healthy at the beginning of the season. That would be, oh, my goodness, that thunder and lightning with Derrick Henry and Keith Mitchell. Then Justice Hill lightning, too. So we'll see what happens with that. Now, um, if it were me, if it were up to me, uh, I know it's probably not going to happen now, but you never know. Dalvin Cook's still out there. He's still out there. Um, I know J.K. Dobbins, he's out there too. But um, I think that it would be wise of the Baltimore Ravens to bring in one more guy. Now, that can happen for, with free agency. It could also happen with the draft. The Baltimore Ravens, of course, have options. Now, I don't expect them to invest anything crazy into the running back position after this. Um, but they could still add another one. And I think they will still add another one because these Baltimore Ravens are certainly running back by committee. They're running back by committee. Um, but this great job for the Baltimore Ravens executing patience, uh, especially how with how yesterday went. Uh, I know Ravens fans were tripping out. Ravens fans were freaking out, saying EDC is asleep. What are EDC doing? Uh, is he not just going to participate? Oh, man, this team sucks. They did this, they did that. And again, that's an annual thing with Ravens fans. We already know how it goes. So it was no surprise. But with Eric DaCosta and the way that they operated this whole thing, um, they executed patience. There could have been times where they panicked. There could have been times where they were like, oh, my goodness, we're seeing these running backs get this. These running backs get that. This running back's going off the market. You know what? Let's raise our price. And maybe they did raise their price. But they waited it out. And there was a little bit of pressure from different teams. There was some other running backs that went off the board and whatnot. But they waited it out, and they got who reportedly who they wanted the whole time. The Baltimore Ravens, they, we talked about this in the offseason, too, and we talked about this with other players. If the Baltimore Ravens really want somebody, they will get that person one way or another. They will circle back around. And we remember, midseason, the Ravens, they were close to trading for Derrick Henry. They really wanted Derrick Henry. They were getting ready to trade for him. And the Titans, they backed out. They backed out at the last second. Everything was ready. Everything was set up. Everything was good to go. Titans backed out. He said, oh, yeah, um, no, we're not going to do this. Why? Hmm, no clue. But that ended up being a good thing for the Baltimore Ravens because it allowed Keaton Mitchell to have, to have an opportunity. Had the Baltimore Ravens got Derrick Henry, we wouldn't have seen Keaton Mitchell. He wouldn't have been getting carries like that. So it ended up working out because now we know what the Baltimore Ravens have in Keaton Mitchell, and he ain't even reached his full potential yet. He just literally just started out. He was an undrafted rookie free agent last year. So not getting Derrick Henry during the season allowed you to see Keaton Mitchell now, allowed you to see him, what he can be for the future. But now you get Derrick Henry, you got him. They circle back around, got him in free agency. Ravens have done this before with guys like um, – uh, Justin Houston They wanted to sign him when he was let go of the Chiefs I believe They were interested in him, pursued him But then what happened? The Colts end up getting him the Colts end up letting him go And Ravens like, oh man, oh yeah, we really liked this guy before Let's circle back, we're going to sign him And they signed him, it worked out Sometimes it doesn't work out when they circle back around Because they loved Yann Yannick Ngakwe When he was on the Jacksonville Jaguars We all love Yannick Ngakwe, wanted him to be a Baltimore Raven They loved him, they tried to trade for him on the Jaguars Didn't work out, obviously and Ngakwe got traded to the Vikings. Didn't work out there. Then the Ravens like, oh, is this an opportunity? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's go circle back around and go get him. And boom. Didn't work out, but they got him. Calais Campbell. That one worked out. But anyway, with Derrick Henry, we hope that this one certainly uh, works out. He is on a team. 
that makes his job a lot easier. Reason being, because while he will be the Baltimore Ravens feature back, they have a lot of other ways that they can get it. And that was probably my favorite part about the Baltimore Ravens offense last year. They could get it in so many different ways. Lamar obviously can get his passing and running. Gus Edwards could get his running the ball. Keaton Mitchell, he was just a big play away. Every couple carries, he's a big play away. Then you had Mark Andrews. When he was healthy, he was doing his thing. Isaiah Likely, when Mark Andrews wasn't healthy, he was doing his thing. It's just a matter of time. Ravens got to get it to where they can both allow them both to do their thing on the field at the same time. They got to get that right because that's an issue too, but talk about that later. But anyway, they can both do their thing. Zay Flowers, self-explanatory. Odell Beckham Jr., when he would be in the game and he would get passes thrown his way, he would make some plays as well. Rashad Bateman, he made some plays here and there. Nelson Aguilar, when he got his opportunity, he made plays too. So I say all that to say that, again, with Derrick Henry joining the Baltimore Ravens, most of those guys are still with the Baltimore Ravens. Odell Beckham Jr. is for now, but he'll probably be gone in two days. Tomorrow's Wednesday, so he'll be cut probably on Thursday because the Ravens got to make that decision by Thursday on 4, p- 4 p.m., so, yeah, he'll, he'll be out of there. Um, most likely. It's not official yet, but I, I think that he'll for sure be out of there. Um, so, yeah, now Derrick Henry joins all of that. And more, because again, the draft still is on the way, and free agency never stops. Just because the first two days of free agency are super fun, it's all these signings, all these people going crazy and whatnot, it's very energetic, it's lively, it's an exciting time, we love it. But free agency literally never stops, because teams are always signing players in the offseason, during the season, in the postseason, free agency never stops. So this is literally the very beginning, but Ravens still have more to add. They still have more to do. They still got a lot more to get done. They are nowhere near done building this football team yet. We talked about this yesterday. We put it out on Twitter when a lot of people were freaking out. And I understood a lot of Ravens. This this is what Ravens fans do. I get it because I'm a Ravens fan myself. And we want the Ravens to pounce on this player, get that player, sign that player right away. We want them to be super active on the first day of free agency, but that's not them. But what I also said was that I feel like we have every reason to trust Eric DaCosta and trust how he will build this roster because, again, what we saw last year, he did a phenomenal job, and that was the best Baltimore Ravens roster that he had ever built. He did a phenomenal job last year. And then then in 2021, he did too, but, again, everybody got hurt that year. But he did a phenomenal job building the roster last year. So right then and there, he really earned my trust with that. Now it's time for him to do it again. But I feel like with Eric DaCosta, we, we, we have more reasons to believe that he'll get something done and, and take care of it in a good way because he's been on the right side of being the Ravens GM a lot more than he's been on the wrong side. So I feel like we got every reason to believe that Eric DaCosta is going to get the job done. Now he's still got a lot of work to do. Still got a lot of stuff to, to shift out. We got some contract restructures that are going to be here before you know it. Because this deal will not be announced by the Baltimore Ravens until they restructure some contract. Well, right now, they're not, un- they're not over the cap. They're under the cap by about $184,000. That's how much cap space they have. Shout out to Brian McFarlane. He said they have about $184,000. Not $184 million. Not $1.184 million. No, no, no. They have about $184,000. Obviously, that is not enough money to sign Derrick Henry. So what the Baltimore Ravens will be doing, you will be hearing about it very, very soon that this player restructured, this player restructured, this player got released, this play is coming very, very soon. Because Wednesday, um, but Wednesday at 4 p.m., they got to be under the cap. They will be. I mean, they're under the cap right now because of Matt BK's deal, they're under the cap, but in order to officially announce Derrick Henry and officially put that contract through. Uh, and actually, you, got, you just got to get under the cap by Wednesday. So they're straight on that. You can actually be over the cap um, after that. So Wednesday, as long as you're under the cap by 4 p.m., you're good. But then you can be over. After that, you can be over it as much as you want to. But then you have to deal with it the following year. So Ravens will be good anyway. But there will be, my point is there will be restructures that will be announced very, very, very soon. So be on the lookout for that. But... Also, be on the lookout for what number is Derrick Henry going to wear? I saw somebody on Twitter yesterday say, hey, 
You know, I had to have a conversation with Jalen Alma Davis about that number 22. And I'm sure if Derrick Henry wants that number 22, should they just send Jalen Alma Davis a little chunk of change? Ja- whoa, 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 hold up. I mean, Pepe Williams, excuse me. Jalen Alma Davis, number five. So that would be if the Ravens got Hollywood back. <laughs> but yeah, for Pepe Williams. So I'm sure if he just sent him a nice little chunk of change, send him a little bread, then he'll come off of, off of that 22. So we'll see how things work themselves out. Team, keep it clean. Subscribe to the channel. I told you, hey, we close. We close to 74K. You know what? With, with how great of a celebration this is, let's get to 75K. From Derrick Henry becoming the new king of the, well, I can't call him the king of the Ravens, but you get where we're going. Let's get to 75,000 subscribers, man. Let's push this thing. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. Subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on because don't miss nothing. I don't want you missing out on nothing, especially when we get news like this. Leave a like on the video so YouTube can keep re- re- recommending this channel to you. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for showing support. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members. Special shout out before we get out of here. I got, I got to give a shout out to the newest Team Keep It Clean uh, patron. And that is none other than, you know, my, you know my phone had to act up right now when I'm doing this. Shout out to T. Jones, senior, who just became a Team Keep It Clean patron. So I appreciate you, T. Jones. Thank you for doing that. Shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean channel members. They all got the nice star next to their name. Uh, if you would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. If you want to become a channel member, all you got to do is click the join button after you subscribe. And hey, I just appreciate y'all's support one way or another. I love y'all. Thank y'all for always being there. Thank y'all for always listening. Thank y'all for just enjoying this crazy ride that has been Derrick Henry. Through all the rumors, through all the reports, through all the articles, through all the stories, through all everything. The Ravens got him, and it's official now, baby.